All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my uh, annual lecture. Uh, and my name is Yu Zhang, and I'm currently an ESO faculty in the Henry Ford College. So today I'm going to give you a presentation, and the topic it is called as the employing the cultural criticism to the teaching of the cross culture literature for the English as a second language English learner. Okay. So before I start my presentation, I just want to check with your experience. Okay. So because I'm so excited to have seen so many faces in this uh, in this lecture room. And how many of you are the English as a second language learners? Could you please raise your hand? Oh, wow. There are so many people. Okay. So I have felt that I'm so lucky to give you my presentation today because during the presentation, I'm going trying to give you a specific literature teaching pedagogy regarding how to read the cross-culture literary works, okay? Here we are. So here is the overview of the presentation, okay? So first, I will provide you a rationale for the presentation topic, okay? Like the, why am I going to choose this topic, okay? So especially when you are doing a research, it is very important to provide like the background information and the reason why you are choosing this topic. So we will discuss a little bit about the purpose of the presentation, my motivation, problems in literature teaching, challenges in the cross-culture literature teaching, research snapshot, okay? And then after I have presented this topic for you, and then I will move on to talk to, uh, to give you a talk regarding the culture criticism unit of the instruction, okay? So as many of you have already received my uh, research snapshot, as well as the teaching unit in your hand, okay? So while I'm doing the presentation, and I will also guide you to read about the slides in my, uh, in my handouts, okay? So we will talk about that, the intro uh, introduction to the culture criticism, the theoretical underpinnings, cultural criticism, implementation, and also a sample lesson using the Romeo and the Julia. Okay? So how many of, of you have already learned about or read about the Romeo and the Julia before? Oh, just a few of them. Okay? So after this uh, lecture, and I sincerely hope that and you can get a better understanding of the Romeo and the Julia. And finally, and I will talk about like the prospect of the pedagogy and the implications. Okay, any questions so far? All right. Okay. So the reason why I'm doing such kind of presentation, it is because of my cross-culture literature and the literacy learning experience. So let me first introduce my, myself to you a little bit. Uh, originally, I'm coming from China, so it has been uh, almost nine years for me to be here, okay? And I have pursued my uh, doctoral degree in Florida, and there I was starting the English education, specializing in English education. Uh, before coming to the U.S., and I have received my bachelor degree in English literature and arts, and then I pursue an advanced degree in Chinese literature and literature, Ch Chinese language and literature. So every time when I was reading about the literary pieces, especially for the cross-culture literary works, I have always found that, yeah, uh, the literary works is full of the culture barrier, okay? So I'm thinking about that what causes my cultural barrier Why I was reading about the literary works, okay? So as a language teacher, as well as a literature teacher, I was, all, I was always thinking about a way to how to come the cross-culture literature learners overcome the barrier they have confronted in the literacy reading, okay? So the purpose of this presentation is to 
to guide you to overcome the cross-culture barrier while you are reading the cross-culture literary books. Okay? And also I would like to talk you to talk you about like the general strategies regarding how can I use a culture as a vehicle to develop to develop your cross-culture awareness while you are doing the cross-culture literacy readings. Okay? So that is the purpose of it. So as you know, in the context of the globalization, there are more international students who are traveling thousands of ways to the US. And we have always said that in the US now, it is really like that we every day we can match their people can, from the different culture background. Okay? So have you ever think about that in order to better communicate with the people here? Okay? Have you ever think about that? Is there a way for you to overcome the cross-culture barrier okay, while you're communicating from the people with their different cultures? Okay? So, so based on this context, I'm trying to develop a pedagogy, appropriate pedagogy to help the people who, are, uh, who, who have the cross-culture experience to understand the literature, literature works better, okay? So that is the rationale why I propose this research, okay? Uh, so the literature teaching approach I have proposed, I have included two aspects. One aspect is to help the people to facilitate a cross-culture literature communication. On the second hand, I'm trying to improve the student overall literature comprehension ability, okay? So I have two goals at hand. Okay. So when I was checking about the literature, I have always found that there are several problems in the literature reading. So traditionally, when the professors in the class teach us about the literary works and they are using the biographical way or the formalist criticism to teach you about the literature, that that has been said, they will ask you to read the literature in great analysis, okay? And they will also ask you to check deeply about the plot development, the themes of the literature, as well as do the character analysis. So what is the consequence of using such kind of approach, okay? It is apparent that such kind of the instructional method it will be lack of the literature engagement in the class. Why? Because you just focus on the development of the story plot in the in the certain literary books, while you fail you failed to bring your own lit life experience and the cross culture literature experience while you are reading the literature. Okay, so that is the reason why I um, proposed a new literature approach approach to use a cultural criticism to help you to bridge the gap between your culture and the culture within the literacy text. Okay. So here are the theoretical underpinnings I'm using. Okay. So the first one is the Rosenblatt reader response theory. Okay. So according to the Rosenblatt reading response theory and the learners they are encouraged to bring their own literary experience as well as the reading experience within uh, while they are reading the literary book. And the second one, it is called the culture schemata theory. Okay? It is very hard to pronounce it. Okay? So it means that one's culture knowledge will influence the interpretations of the literary text. Okay? So for example, uh, if you are, yeah, first come here, okay, and you will see that the people here, the, uh, the U.S. people, and during the Sunday, during the, uh, during the Sunday, they will have the Sunday worship. They have to go to the church for the worship, okay? So, so related to your previous experience, do you have such kind of experience in your country? Do you? No, not, not very much, right? Yeah, maybe you have... There are some people there who also do the Sunday worship, but 
the religious they are talking is different from the religions, uh, religions, religious experience you have experienced. Okay, so that is a culture schemata. Okay, so uh, so the third one it is called the interpretive community theory. So that means that while you are form the different study group, okay, so everyone is encouraged to bring your own experience and to share with your culture experience and and share with your diverse perspectives to interpret the literary works. Okay? So that is all the theoretical frameworks that I built for my current research. Okay? So look at that. So at the beginning of the session and I have talked that for the cross culture literature learners and you may have confronted a lot of the challenges while you are reading about the cross-culture literary books, right? Why? Because you have your own cultural background, and the cultural background you have you have experienced might be different, might be different with the culture presented within the literary text. Okay. So so look at the, this image. Okay. And in the center of the image, it is a human being's brain. Okay. And on the left side of it, and this, this one, uh, they, are, they have been exposed to read about the Shakespeare's literary work. Romeo and Julia, or the Macbeth, Hamlet, something like that, okay? So the people's cultural background actually, so for example, like me, I'm from China. So all the literature I have read before, and their, all the literature knowledge and I have had is based on the Chinese culture knowledge, okay? So what is the reaction, okay? When the two civilizations, the two cultures, uh, informations have come in my mind, okay? So how can you overcome the challenge you have confronted with while you're reading such kind of the literary books, okay? So based on the challenges I have met, based on my previous research hypothesis, and I have proposed a new literature teaching method that is called a cultural criticism, okay? So cultural criticism, it is developed by the gun, okay? So it has been said, one should focus on the, focuses on the element, cultural element within the text, okay? That's the effect of one's perspective and understanding the text. So using the cultural criticism, and you are not only bring your own cultural knowledge to do the literature analysis, but also, and you are sharing your perspective with the people who are different from cultures, and then you are reached a consensus, okay, through the reading the literary works, and you are having. Okay. So here is a theoretical framework, okay? So based on the reader's response theory, culture schemata theory, interpretive community in, interpretive community theories. And then using the cultural criticism and it will invite the students to invite the students response for the literary path. Okay? And also it will encourage the students to explore their diversified, di diverse perspectives. And it will also ask the students to identify the cultural elements within the task, okay? And then in this way, the cross-culture uh, understanding could be facilitated, okay? Okay, so here is the teaching procedure. Okay, so first, you identify the cultural elements from the text, okay? And then, you match the to your own culture aspects, okay? And Next one, you respond it with your own culture schemata. Okay, so that is the one flow that you go when you are using this method. The second one, and in order to help you to understand the cross-cultural elements within it, so you have to explore more deeply regarding the cultural elements with the cultural text. So that means that you are required to do some like the analysis, literary analysis based on your research, okay? Yeah, and then you have to respond it 
with your own culture, cross-culture uh, understanding. Okay? So finally, once you have your own culture analysis, and then once you have also search for the more information regarding the culture elements within the test, and you will feel more comfortable to understand the literary test you are reading. Okay? So finally, you are compare the responses and you are form your own culture comparison. And finally, you will form your own ideas to overcome the culture elements, to overcome the culture barrier within the literary text. Okay. So how can we implement the culture criticism? Okay. So here you will see that on the left side of this PowerPoint, okay, of this slide, the teacher and they will be the facilitator. And then the students will be divided into the several groups, into the literary group, okay, into the literature discussion. So the, student, uh, the teachers will assign you to help you to select the literary test. And then the students will be required to select the discussion topics and then to put forward the ascension questions that you have. Okay? And then the students, they are using their, their resources, the students' resources, as well as their uh, outside resources to identify the cultural elements in the test. And then they identify the cultural elements within their culture schemata. And then they form their responses, and finally, they are making the comparison. According to my in-class implementation and the student leading groups and they have such kind of a, such kind of the responsibility. Okay? So they have to select the literary pieces that are aligned with a common discussion topic. And then they prepare the big questions and then to distribute it to the class ahead of the class time. And then they will facilitate the class discussion. So here is my research snapshot, okay? So my research actually, it is attempt to examine the effect of the utilizing a culture schema theory, culture criticism approach to the teaching of the cross-culture literature, literature uh, for the ELC learners, okay? So I have designed the different tasks to, to, uh, to, to testify the fact of the using culture criticism in the following aspect. So the one aspect is that will I has the you uh, will I use the culture of the criticism will help the students yeah to help the student understand the culture element uh, in the literary books. And the second question will will be that will the culture criticism. Uh, can, uh, can help the students uh, to achieve higher scores in terms of their reading comprehension. Okay, so I have two, uh, two research questions. So my purpose is not only to facilitate, to help the students uh, to, to, uh, to understand the cultural element within the literary test, as well as I want to enhance their cross-culture literature comprehension abilities, okay? So this started and I'm using a uh, different instrument. The first uh, instrument I'm using is a two AC test concerning the culture analysis of the Britain, of the Britain, of the Britain in Pride and the Prejudice. And the other one will be the series of the literature comprehension test, okay? So I have done the data collection to collect the student performance scores in the two culture uh, analysis test. And I also collect the student performance scores in the three literature comprehension test, okay? So I'm, I'm using the student test for English majors, the band four, as, as, a, co as a covariant in my research, okay? So that is a snapshot of my research and after one semester of the collecting the data, and the result has been found that the cultural criticism approach resulted in better culture understanding of the literary test, as well as the K-12 
can the students who are receiving who are receiving the culture uh, criticism approach will result a better literature comprehension uh, than the traditional formalism as well as the biographical approach. Okay. So here I would like you to demonstrate a lesson using the culture criticism of the instruction. Okay. So you will also be able to see the samples as well as the sample lessons in my assign in my assigned handouts. So while you are if you are the instructor and you can select many lit literary tasks, okay? So the themes and the topics can follow, can range from the politics, economics social, customs, as well as the beliefs, okay? So there are wide range of the topics in each literary work. So for example, if you are reading about the British literature, you are reading about the uh, beer wolf, okay? And you can choose the tribal culture in the, in, the, in the beer wolf, okay? So another one, if you are choosing the paradise laws, and you can choose in the religious perspectives, in the paradise laws, okay? Yeah, so anyway, and you have a lot of flexibility to choose any cultural topic you have interested in, okay? You just need to follow the procedures using the cultural criticism to develop your lessons and to form your own literary process, responses, okay? So for the sample plans that I have, uh, I have uh, chosen for you, and I'm using the Romeo and the Julius, okay? So according to the definition of the culture, understanding of the literature, it means that you are understand, you understand of the culture influences in literary tasks from the perspectives of the general concept of the culture, okay? So I divided into the general co concept of the culture into the several culture elements, customs, politics, religion, economy, society, okay? So for example, while I'm asking you to read about like the Romeo and the Julia, uh, you may choose about like the love, okay? Love as your topic. So you want to do a deep analysis about the love between the, this, this young couple, okay? And also, you can also choose like the Aristocracy's choice of the marriage, okay? So now, you are choosing about the aristocracy's choice of the marriage, and you are referring to the social and economic, economic culture elements within their selected literary task, okay? So anyway, you do have a much flexibility to choose the topic you have interest in, okay? So for the handouts I'm giving it to you, I am the instructor, I'm showing like the sample lesson for you. So I'm choosing like the betrayal of the arranged marriage in the beloved ones, okay? And then based on this common discussion topic, and I, I have selected three literary tasks for you to read about that before you bring it to your class discussion, okay? So the act of one, act of two, scene two, the Capulet's garden, and act three, scene five, the Capulet's orchard, and the final act will be the uh, churchyard, okay? So if you have the chance to read about that, and you will find that these three acts, they are aligned with the common topic we have chosen. That is the beloved one, the betrayal of the, that is the, that is the betrayal of the arranged marriage in beloved ones, okay? Yeah. So let me do you a, a brief analysis about these three acts. So the first act that I have choosing, it is the intense passion in beloved persons. So in this act, you will find that there are lots of the emotional love between Romeo and Julia, okay? And they, are, they want to acknowledge deeply and loudly of the love with each other. So based on this content, based on this context, and the student you know, should propose several big questions that is related to the common 
uh, common that is related to the common discussion questions we have choose. Okay, we have chosen. So you can propose the questions like, what factors might prevent Julia from loving Romeo? Okay, what factors and what lines can you see from them? Okay, and the second one, uh, the actor three, scene five, it is called that. Uh, it has been remind us the Julia's marriage. It is arranged marriage from his from her family, from her mother's father. Okay, and then the Julia is reluctant to accept this marriage. Okay, he, she is a try to uh, to disobey to her family's arrangement. So in this act, the conflict arises, okay? So how can we resolve this conflict? How to solve the conflict between the Capu and the Julia? Capu is, a, is a Julia's father, okay? So that is the second thing, okay? That's like the summary of it. So the third one will be the personal choice. So as you have may have seen in this scenery, and you will find that in order to consummate the love, and the Romeo and the Julia, both of them, they choose to betray of the arranged marriage. So, so in this way, and because that they are, they have to they are betray of the arranged marriage, and then finally they have to consummate the love. Okay. So in this way, we call it this. This is like the tragedy in the world. But even that they choose to die, uh, finally their conflict has been resolved. Okay? So you will, uh, see, see, you will see that based on these three acts, and we choose, it, we choose the topic of the betrayal of the beloved ones, marriage, uh, of the marriage in the beloved ones as our common discussion topic. So this is a culture presented in the Romeo and the Julia. Okay. So when I was asking my student to to lead the class discussion, and I, I'm asking them to pay more attention to the why and the how questions. So the leading group, and they are required to choose a group to choose the questions based on their why, based on their how questions. So the questions they should be, they should propose, should be open-minded, should be interesting questions rather than a factual questions. Okay. So for example, I, I have remembered my students. Yeah, they have proposed the questions that why do the Romeo and the Julia marry marry secretly? Why secretly? It is a very good question. And then the student will guide the students to read the literature literature books based on the social culture element in that time. Okay? We will check like the like the laws, even for the marriage laws that regulate the people who are married married. So is that kind of the marriage could be considered as a like the secret ma marriage should be like the formal marriage in that time. So they will do like the literature discussion like that. Okay? Alright. So and also I put there several requirements for the student to post the questions. The first one, uh, they should be relevant to the selected literary pieces. That means that you cannot talk uh, that are aligned with the literary text you select with. Okay. And the, the second one will be connected to the social culture influence. Okay. So that is all the requirements that I have set for my students. So here is a sample of essential questions. Okay? So if you look at it deeply and you will find that all the questions and they are based on the social culture in the 16th century. Okay? Yeah. So like what it, what what is the Julia dad, Lord Capulet's attitude toward his daughter's marriage? Okay? How would you characterize the Capulet's marriage? Why does he hold such an attitude? Please justify your answer based on the British social culture in 16th century. Okay, so look at this question design deeply, and you will find that the students they will have to to pay attention about the attitude analysis 
and you have to analyze deeply regarding what is the underlying reason that causes this attitude, the underlying reason, in order to find, the, find out the underlying reasons, and the students should be able to delve into the culture, the social culture element in the 16th century, okay? So they will do a literature, literature research on their own within the group, okay? So here are the other, here is another question. Uh, why do Romeo and Julia marry in secret? So what do you think about, what, what, do you, what is your view about this? Okay. What are the consequences of such separacy? Okay. Yeah, so do you have any answers in your mind for these questions if you have already read about the Romeo and Julia? Of course, you are encouraged to bring your own 
into your own interpretations into the literary work. But finally, you have to try to depict the culture within the literary text. Right? And then you are doing the comparisons and you form your own responses. And finally, the culture barrier within the literary text will be tackled. Okay? So that is the ultimate purpose to, d to use a culture criticism. Okay? All right. So the influences of the using the cultural criticism approach are as follows. So it will challenge you to consistently examine your taken for granted assumptions. Okay, do you agree with this one? Yeah. Okay, so it's like that you have, because you are deeply influenced by your own culture, and sometimes you may hold like the take for, uh, take for granted assumptions. Okay? So through doing this activity, through your constant uh, uh, inquiry of the literary works, and you, through your constant reflection about your own culture, and through the comparison with the culture you have, and the culture within the literary text, and uh, finally, and your take for granted assumptions will be removed. Okay? Yeah. And then, it will help you to develop a way to think about, study, research, and discuss about the, the diversity of the literature and the culture. Okay? So it is related to one important question. So why do we need to read the literature? Why do we need to read about the cross-cultural literature? Okay? I think that the Answers, the possible answers for me uh, lies in that uh, by reading the literature works from the other culture and I can see more of the world, okay? And I can broaden my perspective through reading about the other's life, through reading about the other's social culture, as well as finally, and my cross-culture awareness will be improved, okay? And then I can better uh, communicate with the others from with the others from the different culture, and I will be more competent to be a qualified global citizen. Okay, so that is the ultimate purpose of why we are using this approach in the literature class, and you can even apply it to the more general settings. Okay, so that is the ultimate purpose of why I'm doing this research. Okay, all right. So according to my student feedback, okay, so they have felt that through the one semester's uh, instruction, and they have felt that they have, they have become more open-minded, and they have more opportunities to express their opinions, and they can understand a particular aspect of the culture as the literary work, written, literary works written time, and their critical thinking has been developed, okay? So that is the advantage of using this approach. Okay. So there is a practical suggestion for the instructors who will teach the students who are coming from the different cultures, okay? So the first one will, you have to consider about the student's culture context, okay, while you are trying to incorporate this in, in approach, okay? Yeah, sometimes you have to avoid some like the heated discussion topics you, to use it in your class, okay? So, so you will have to always to provide the students to observe and experience a character's life, uh, life experience influenced by the culture, social element at that time, okay? So as an instructor, you also have to provide like the first-hand resources that could reflect the authentic culture in the text, okay? So do not use a second source. So when the students ask for your help, and you have to try to provide them like the first hand source as much as possible, okay? So anyway, as the instructors, you are the facilitator, you are the resources, and you should be always support the student's inquiry towards a particular culture and facilitate the cross-culture communication in the learning process, okay? So that is a tip for the instructors, 
Okay. All right. So what are the implications for the Henry Ford College teaching and the learning community? So uh, it is, has been my seventh semester here. So in my, in my first semester, and I'm so impressed about the student diverse populations in my TOEFL class. So even that the TOEFL classes, there are only seven students in my class, but almost each of the students, they are coming from the different backgrounds, okay? All right, so I hope that from a practi practical perspective, so uh, especially for the instructors who will teach you like the uh, literature works, and it can help them to build, to, to, provo to provide them like the appropriate strategies to teaching the students who are coming from another culture, okay? And then I hope that the students who are reading the cross-culture literature can gain a better appreciation of the uh, both of the language, language and the culture values within the literary text. So you won't be afraid of the reading the cross literary works and you will find that the enjoy learning experience will have a lot of fun, right? So because you are inquired to bring your perspectives and you are inquired to do additional research about the social cultural elements yeah, in, in a, another culture, okay? and then you will enjoy the process, okay? So for example, uh, so this semester I'm teaching the ELCL, English language literature, uh, the ELCL 106 reading and the listening pa uh, classes. So we are using the test book, uh, the pathways. Uh, we are moving on to the unit six, so in that unit, and we are talking about the food culture within the test, okay? So I have asked my students to show their, I mean, the food, the food in their culture, like what kind of the element, and how can you make about that, and how do you like about that, okay? And then I, ask, I also show the students about my food culture in China, okay? And then I ask them to do the comparison, okay? So I hope that this lecture, I mean, the ultimate purpose will not only stay on the literature instruction, but can be expanded to all the areas, all the studies that is concerned about the cross-culture, cross-culture learning and the teaching, okay? Yeah, okay. And then from a broader perspective, so as a global citizen, as an international student, or as an intercultural instructor, and you have to be prepared for your students to for the teachers or for the for the other people who are always coming who who whose culture beliefs and whose background is is different from you. So you have to be prepared for to keep an open mind when communicate when communicating with the people from the other culture. Okay? So how to facilitate your communication with them, with them and how to better understand about the other culture, and then you will become the good friends, you will become the, uh, the how, can you, uh, how can you better get involved in our culturally diverse learning community. That is very important, right? So that is my presentation today. So the conclusion, in order to help you to develop your global perspectives of the cross-culture, literature teaching and please help yeah to use the culture criticism yeah in the while you are teaching especially to in in to encourage your students inquiries and in engagement and invite them to bring their own culture and share with their culture and perspectives with you okay so thank you so much
use the total criticism of units. Okay, so hope it will be possible.